Hello, this is John Jughead Pearson here in Japan, Osaka. I just um, finished my first interview on this new sort of series within the Jughead's Basement series um, where I sort of hold dual, dueling, um, dueling interviews, which I consider more of a conversation. I might call it something like uh, interview is conversation. That might be a, a neat name. Uh, so this is the first one, and uh, it is with me and Grim Deeds, who, if you're not familiar with, he's a uh, one-man band of sorts, works with a bunch of different musicians out of California, and he has many, 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 many songs that he has uh, done. He's very prolific. I will put a link to his uh, Bandcamp site in the comments below, I think. I'm learning how to do this stuff. I, there is a way to put it in the screen, but I haven't figured that out yet. So it might be in the screen or it just might be in the comments below. Um, so here it is. Uh, these are unedited. I wanted to try to do a little bit of an easier project. I tend to do very complicated projects. Um, and this one I just wanted to be about the interview. Uh, so the only structure there is to try to keep it short is uh, we have 20 minute increments, three of them for an hour. The first 20 minutes, uh, we interview e each other with questions. We preset questions. Then after 20 minutes, there will be a randomizing device in order to launch the second uh, conversation. And then after that 20 minutes, there will be one more randomizing device, which you will understand more once uh, you start watching or listening to this, because I will release it as a podcast and as a YouTube video. Podcast will probably be a little bit edited, whereas the YouTube video will just be raw. Um, and then we both have two minutes to wrap it up at the end. So with, with now, with, with now, <laughs> unedited, without further ado, here is John Jughead Pearson, which is me, dueling conversation interview with Grim Deeds. This is just me again. I forgot to add that um, the first... 20 minutes of the interview might be a little sketchy on the uh, recording. We were having some problem with the Skype situation. Um, but I decided, like I said, to not edit and leave it in. Uh, just so you know, after about 20 minutes, I call him back, and the full rest of the 40 minutes is pretty clear sailing from there. So if you can deal with the sort of sketchiness of the first 20 minutes, uh, and the conversation even gets better too. We got a little bit more comfortable. So without further ado, without further ado, here is Grim Deeds and John Jughead Pearson in a dueling interview conversation. Hello, this is John Jughead here, and I'm with uh, with my first dual interview uh, subject person, uh, Grim Deeds. Uh, so we're going to uh, tackle this hour or so uh, interview process. Um, and we're both gonna, I'll explain when it happens, but I wanna show our books first that we have. Uh, we're, we were both asked to select a book that we will randomly choose uh, a sentence from later. Uh, mine, since I don't have a lot of books here, is uh, Life in Japan. Is, <laughs> yes. so I wasn't probably, expecting that. <laughs> yeah, so I'll try to read something in, uh, when I get to it, I'll read it, I'll try to read it in Japanese and then I'll ask the question or the statement in English. So that's okay, what well, I'm going to use. Life in Japan. So what do you got right for me, uh, Mr. Deeds? Uh, I have a piece of literature here that I've read many, many times. Uh, I've come to know all of its nuances because it's been, you know, you read something like a hundred times and, and you really you really get to know it. It's called Snuggle Puppy by oh. Sandra Boyton. And I've read this book probably 50 or 60 times, like, in my life. And that's, that's, that's a lot, <laughs> so we're you know? So we're using Snuggle Puppy. Uh-huh. Right. Um, I, I was hoping that, uh, I guess one thing is, I mean, this I'll learn as we, as I do these, but, uh, when we read the, whatever sentence, whatever we discuss, it shouldn't be related to the books themselves at all. So we should use it as <laughs> okay. a thing to have something more to do with our lives outside of the book. Well, that's um, a good point because yeah. obviously mine has to do with like being a dad and, and, and stuff right. like that. So, so I'll, I'll yeah, try to, yeah, I'll try to make it. Mine has to do with being in Japan. So I would probably try yeah. to do something not about being in Japan when we start talking about it. But, but isn't it cool that the viewers will see yours and see mine and know a little something about our lives? Because they'll be like, oh, he's, he's in Japan. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Deeds has a child. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, so let's, uh, let's start this off. In the, um, so we have questions for each other, and then we'll – oh, yeah. I'm going to have to start this alarm, so let me start that right now. 
So the Good, idea man. for the audience here is that for 20 minutes, uh, me and Deeds will ask each other questions, and then when that goes off, I'll explain what happens next. Okay, so sounds good, man. Start it now. Twenty. So we're counting down. Let's uh, let's see who goes first. Um, yeah. You want you yeah. want heads or tails? This will be for heads. asking questions. So heads. Okay. Okay. Heads. Heads. You ask first. Okay. That's a heads. So, yeah, it's a heads. It was heads. a weird coin. It was a Japanese coin, so it didn't actually have a head on it. Oh my gosh, <laughs> a Japanese coin. It's yen. So I'm saying it was a hundred yeah, yen or something. Yeah, this is a single yen. Yeah, this is a. Oh wow, that's like rare. A, it's like 0. 0.8 of our one penny. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, so my question. Yes. I'm gonna ask you. Um, I'm gonna ask you sort of about uh, your your identity as as an artist, your musical identity too. Mm -hmm. Uh, because one thing that I mean, I remember very distinctly getting the uh, Booga album, and um, I, I stole it. I shoplifted it from a Tower Records in Northern Virginia, and most mostly because I had seen it on T-shirts, and I was like, "Well, I guess it's probably cool," you know. <laughs> and, I, and I got it, and I was like, "Wow, this is awesome," you know. So anyway, on the back of it, uh, you stood out in the photo. I was like, "Well, who the fuck is this guy?" You know, he's got long hair. He's obviously not trying to fucking swallow a trend or be cool. And even throughout the entire like pop punk process, and you, you know you're a veteran, you know you're like a fucking you're up there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you never had to wear like the leather jacket and the fucking Converse. You know what I'm saying? You you didn't have to look the part. You you were just yourself. That's what always stoked me about you, man. So, how did that develop early in your life, or like how has it played a role in your in your identity as Jughead? I, I'm glad you, I'm glad you noticed about that. Me, I, I I'm proud of that about me. But I think a lot of it might have started with a little bit of naivete at first. Like I didn't, I love all different types of music. Always have. So I never really acquainted a look with a a scene. Mm -hmm. Um. So it didn't even it didn't even occur to me to uh, to try to do that. And also I was always into this uh, idea of being a Puritan, where I've never had a piercing, I've never dyed my hair, oh, yeah. I didn't have any tattoos. Yeah, um, I wanted my who I am to be who I am. I, I let. Yeah. I mean, for a while, I would even wear just straight, solid color clothes, not no yeah. advert advertisings. And I, I, I let go on of that a little bit more. I let that uh, yeah. happen. Like I like, I like yeah. some flary clothes sometimes, but in yeah. general, in general, I believe that I want as much of the person themselves to make the effect, and not what they're wearing or what they're mm -hmm. not how they change themselves. You know. Yeah. Uh, so that was a big part of it. Um, the, the funny thing was that, that that reminds me of a story when I, my mom, uh, who is very generous to me, uh, lets me do what I want in many ways, um, has never really seen the band, but has always like sanctioned that, you know, mm. go ahead, do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. um, but she one day said to me when I had my hair long, she goes, John, is your hair long just because you're in a band? <laughs> and I said, Mom, if you knew the scene that I am in with the mohawks yeah. and the shaved heads, yeah. You, yeah. Would, you would know that I don't, <laughs> I don't fit in at all. That's funny. That's funny. She but figures she, just you're a rock and roller, you know, you're a, <laughs> you're a, a you know, roller, rip rap. So have the long hair. For my, yeah. That was my sister's scene. My sister was into like, you know, the glam rockers and stuff like that. But, oh, that's cool, man. But I didn't even, you know, I never even used hairspray. I just didn't, mm -hmm. didn't do it, much of anything. So, um, well, you know, like I like I said, you know, uh, when we were just started chatting, like you've always cultivated your own style, and it's been it's just like you're an individual, and I thought I think it's cool, especially in this like the pop punk world, because it's so tempting for so many bands to sort of affect an image that's like this traditional like yeah like bubblegum uh, fucking you know sock hop and zombies, you know all these like sort of typical things that the, that a lot of the bands will sing about, and I was kind of attracted to that a little bit, you know, just because yeah. it's kitschy and it's fun and, you know, why not? But at the same time, when bands keep doing the same thing, it, it becomes lame. And even though I love the music of pop punk, like, that's my favorite, like, expression of rock and roll. It's just that really simple style. I've always, uh, I've always struggled with it because a lot of pop punk really sucks and it's kind of like, eh, it's cringeworthy, you know, but then there's also, it's, it's a genre that has so much potential and when it's done well and with some thoughtful lyrics behind it and some thoughtful approach, it's, it's great. It's like the most authentic music that you can, you can make basically. Yeah, you know? yeah I agree. I mean, uh, I often fight for the idea that, you know, pop, pop punk in its root is a fairly simple format, 
but that mm-hmm. does not mean that it's easy to do. Like it takes, oh, takes not someone at all, who's yeah. pretty creative to be able to take those three chords and make something. Mm-hmm. Or like you're saying, make a statement with the lyrics or and make it also melodically interesting. True. Um, I, I struggled with that for years. I didn't think I was good at it at all. Like all through Weasel, I just I left that all to like Ben and Vapid because they were so good at it. I mean Yeah. Yeah. Amazing at it that I it just wasn't my thing. I could add the melodic solos to it, which was more yeah. my sort of uh contribution during those days. But uh Yeah. I did not have any confidence in being a, a writer for that type of music. And still I'm not confident for pop punk. Like mm-hmm. I think even in Blackout sort of veers into different genres and I'm more comfortable in yeah. that weird area than in Yeah. Whenever yeah. I write a pop a straight pop punk song, I'll I'll show it to the band and they're like, the guy, I, John, this is good and I'm like it's yeah. just not, it's not as good as what <laughs> Ben or Dan would write. Well, I mean the thing <laughs> is, man, it would be very weird if you came out with a song that sounded like like that, you know, it, it wouldn't seem right. It'd be like, wait, Jughead's doing this? Because yeah. I, when I listen, even in Blackouts, I feel like I'm listening more to the authentic you, you know, because like the songs you write, they have your personality, it seems. And, and it's yeah. it's still cool. And it still has some pop punk. Well, hold, hold, hold that thought. You just got we got some uh, static going. But I just want to make sure until it passes. OK, speak Uh-oh. again. Is some Japanese spirits like going by your apartment or something. <laughs> I'm like Japanese, you know, I don't know. Wow, anyway, the, the, the video and the audio is off now. Uh oh. I hear it. Let me, yeah. Let me, I'm just checking to make sure we're okay. I'm gonna yeah, switch just, something that sh- just heard. hopefully doesn't disconnect us. I'm wondering how that happened. All right, yeah, okay. Let's if see. it does. Hey, there. You, you did something. Up. Yeah, it's still a little bit off. We might have to see how that how this goes. Okay. Well, hey, it, we know we can always resume whenever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe I just won't watch you because I think the audio is probably online, right? <laughs> That's true. That's going to be hard, though, huh? <laughs> and how annoying would it be to be like between each question, like? You know, <laughs> like no one wants to see that. Uh, it's like in those news reports when they're when they're communicating with someone in like Afghanistan or something. Like, oh, really? Is that is that is that, is that right? And it's like, <laughs> yes. And I'm like, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> like, dude, do some editing. Like, don't don't let me sit through this awkwardness. <sighs> and then they touch their air for a while too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. thinking like, oh God, is this going to be over soon? Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you better watch. Uh, you're moving around too, because your mic on your your thing is hitting. I think your zipper there. Better. Maybe. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm getting really into this interview, so. Yeah, I know. Uh, we're we're all very new at this. Um, <laughs> so that's that was pretty good. I I don't let's 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 me ask let me ask you a question now. Okay. Uh, we'll start a new conversation with that. Uh, sure. Most pedestrian book January of the now. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> what what are you referring to right now? I, I'll just I'll just read this one. Well, I wrote. Oh, you're you're like, looking at your book. Are you looking at your book? Oh, oh my notes, my notes. Oh, your notes. Oh, I see. No, there's a note that said most pedestrian but genuine of the now. Oh yeah, okay, I can go off uh, on that. All right. Um, I was reviewing your lyrics, and they really seem to be what I call pedestrian, but in a good way. Meaning they seem to be about the real world, like. Yeah. Things that are oh, yeah. now, and yeah. happening, oh. and I think that's really um, admirable. Uh, but I, oh, I, I wonder if uh, what do you think that has to is all of your writing in general that way, or is that sort of geared more towards how you write songs? And do you know what I mean by the pedestrian now? Like, yeah. I do, I do, and uh, it's a it's interesting to hear it phrased that way because I've had a sense of this, you know, for a while, and kind of what my intent has been. But uh, I haven't quite thought of it in that way. It's like a cool. It's cool to hear you say that. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it's it's sort of a, an aspect of my life that I think deeply about, but I don't get to really com- conversate with uh, many, many people about, you know, a songwriting personality or what what your purpose is musically and stuff. But um, I definitely knew that writing songs with certain lyrical content that was like 
very unabashed, very honest, and and takes risks as far as like maybe stating an opinion or, or covering a topic that's like weird that doesn't really seem like an appropriate topic topic for a so-called like fun style of music, then then I think you're on to something because I think music should be a channel for expressing your personality and also seeking, you know, it's a therapeutic device. So I dump a lot of my very negative thoughts and feelings into, into songs that I write because it provides like a sort of therapy for me, you know? And, and I've in recent years, like since having a kid and stuff, I've struggled with like being depressed off and on and feeling these very intense emotions, like good and bad. And, and the music is really, an essential outlet in my life because I, I don't think I can handle life without it, honestly. So I want, I want the music to convey an urgency because it's an urgency for me. Like it's, it's something deeply personal and deeply significant to my life. And it has to be, I have to have that approach with writing songs and it used to, and you have to have confidence in order to do that, you know? And I didn't always have that because in the beginning I wanted just to sound like this band or that band. I wanted it to be pop punk enough you know what i mean because i've been in before grim deeds there I had a couple bands but um grim deeds was my first opportunity to just be like well i actually have things to say that i would either want to say in a conversation with someone who i'm meeting who might be a friend or at least have a conversation with people who you know maybe have a like-mindedness or have an interest in like thinking about life you know deeper things and how the everyday uh, interactions we have and, and experiences we have sort of shape this this higher um, worldview or, or spiritual view. I mean, life's a pretty deep thing, man. It's uh, you know, yeah, yeah. it's a very very much a struggle in many ways, but it's also so beautiful and so uh, incredible. And and I, and I think just the fact that we're alive and that we're human beings and everything is a uh, it's a trip. You know, I'm not really a religious person, but but I've in recent years tried to connect more spiritually to this idea of like how, what's our purpose in life or how should we treat each other and why does that matter and you know just kind of essentially I don't know in a way growing up but in more of a trying to figure out how I can be a better person sort of way so I try to I try to approach all the lessons I'm learning in my like young adult life to the Grim Deed songs because there's a lot of humor in it obviously but it's based on real things, you know what I mean? Like real struggles that I'm having. And, and if you know me, you'll know what the song's about for sure. Yeah. But, you know, I just, I, 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 yeah. I can relate to it because in uh, my theater company, The Neo Futurist, we have to write these short two-minute plays that are not characters. They're like true stories about ourselves, and we have to write them every mm -hmm. week. So we're writing anywhere from two to 12 of these every week. Wow. And, um, what I what I think is the difficulty especially for someone who's more on the uh, liberal or left side leaning or, you know, um, is that it's hard to come up with a unique thought. Um, uh, cause what I would, what it, we'd end up doing sometimes and people, when people wanted to be political, they yeah. end up just like spewing basically what the newspaper had said that week or something. And it's really difficult not to get caught in that sort of, oh, yeah. uh, just responding instead of, pulling it from yourself and your own opinions. Uh, right. You seem to be pretty good at that. And that's why I think maybe you go between uh, explorations of people and also explorations yeah. of political things going on. Because sure. I think, I, I, I don't know if I'm reaching in your brain, but I feel like you're trying to get beyond that, just the stereotypical of what, or the generic yeah. of what is going on right now. Does that yeah. make sense? I, yeah, I want it to be ambiguous. First of all, I want it to be, I mean, it will, all my songs sort of suggest a sort of snotty liberalness, I think, and like a, a grim sort of depressed outlook, but with like a sarcastic humor sort of style. But um, I, uh, I think it's really important to, for me to view music as a communication device. You know, it's, it's like a deeper form of a conversation that you're having because you're relating on these emotional levels. Plus you have lyrics that, that you know, are, are poetic or can be poetic. And so there's there's just this whole deeper um, aspect to communicating that way because we're communicating in words right now and it's very clear and like we're, we understand each other. But when there's melody involved and when there's a, an emotional connection to the music, it's like a whole other thing, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I try, I try like I think we're having an awesome conversation right now. And that's the kind of thing that I try to achieve through songwriting, too. But with songwriting, you have to be, you know, it's an opportunity to be to su be subtle or to be uh explicit i mean 
you, you have your voice, just like when you write plays, just like any kind of artist has their voice through whatever their, their medium is. And um, I try really hard to be like a sincere person. I don't know if I'm a good person, but I try to be honest about who I am. Mm -hmm. And that's an element that I think takes maybe some balls or something, but I, I like to see that in other people. And I, I aspire to be a person who can be open, you know, open about my flaws, open about my weaknesses and uh, my shortcomings, as well as like what I have to offer that, that could be good, you know? Yeah. So it's just, it's just appreciating our humanity sort of. I feel myself that I, I can't help, but I, I might actually even get too poetic for my own good. <laughs> and I even fight it a lot too, because I mean, a lot of what I believe in is once again is being as straightforward as you can. But I yeah, still yeah. want it to be artistic and you know, yeah, artsy that's in good. Ways. That's cool. So, uh, and 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 you know, I'm also for that. Uh, the idea of helping people to think for themselves instead of being sure. dogmatic, and it's oh, so yeah. easy to get do very dogmatic in in writing. Mm -hmm. um, because you're, you're going to your core of yourself and going, well, what do I know? Well, this is what I want to share. And it's hard yeah. to make it not sound like this is how you should think, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, that's that's very – I think it, you're a very thoughtful person if you consider that. Because a lot of people wouldn't even consider that it might sound preachy or, or you know, whatever. Like people – a lot of people just, ah, ah, just put it out there like because they're emotionally heated or something. And then they don't think about like how it's going to be received. You know, that's how things on Facebook get, get ramped up when people get in arguments and stuff. It's yeah. like, you know, they're not, they're just eh, putting it out there without the sensitivity of thinking like, well, what's the context here? Uh, this is another human being I'm talking to someone and in a lot of cases is a friend of yours. And then, you know, people get all crazy on the internet. And it's, uh, I think about that because in my job I have to send a lot of emails and stuff with, and I'm a teacher. So there's like parents that I interact with and everything nowadays is very touchy, <laughs> you know, yeah. as far as like what you're allowed to say and what you're not allowed to say. And that's why, I mean, Grim Deeds is, is still pretty risky for me, for my career. And like, I could easily see it not going over so well, you know, some of the lyrics that I've written and stuff. So it is what it is, man. But I think it's cool that you, you add that poetic, like, yeah, just, I mean, it's your instinct to express yourself that way. And it's authentic. I mean, it does, it always comes across as authentic to me. So if that's the case, dude, that's that's rad because you're still, you know, that's how you want to do it. It's your style. It's like your accent, your style. So, yeah, well, that's a good way to put it. An accent. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Let's move on to a question from you because I have to keep this thing moving in that way. All right. So I'm going to the first the introductory questions will be like kind of safe questions, I guess. But we might get into some deeper shit. Um, this, this is a question about guitar playing. One of the things that that I always appreciate about you is the way you play guitar is a very honest and earnest way of playing guitar and it's a, a way that's easy to relate to and you're a good guitarist and you're a proficient guitarist but you also seem to just enjoy playing it and like when a guitarist looks like they're having fun while they're playing guitar it's it's better than a guy who can like shred and stuff and it just kind of has this arrogant like yeah, yeah look at me like you just look like you're having a great time with your friends on stage when you're playing guitar and it's, it's awesome and I've always felt that uh, in music that's like a really cool way that someone in a band can make a, a great contribution even if they had nothing to do with like writing the song or, or composing it or whatever it's just like the energy that you put out was really a big part of why I was a Screeching Weasel fan you know it's because like well you know here's this one guy and yeah he has his thing and he's a great songwriter but then look at him <laughs> like he's having a great time and he looks like someone I would want to hang out with and stuff and that's the, the element of friendship and community that you've consistently sort of incorporated into the the Jughead persona I've always felt there was something special about that and and you know you'd have those shows at your house you've traveled to play with other bands and stuff and that, that's awesome and I hope you realize how much that means to people because anybody who's had the opportunity to like work with you or just even, you know, like for me, this experience we're having right now, it means a lot, man. Like you've contributed a great deal to this sort of like the, not just the pop punk culture, but just the punk rock culture, you know? And that's, uh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's a question in there really, but uh, do you have a response yeah, to I that? I don't know if there's a question in there. Um, well, you we started out talking about get the guitar. Um, oh, I, no know. wonder. Okay. okay, so so back to guitar. I'm sorry, I forgot it was it was about that. <laughs> I went I went off in a deeper level. But, but okay, so just explain to me, uh, what's your relationship to like 
guitar playing right now? Like, I, I don't know, you know, you haven't been playing a lot of like electric guitar shows. I, I know you did the Mopes yeah. shows and stuff and like here and there, but yeah, what's your relationship with like playing electric guitar these days? Do you play more acoustic or more electric or what's, what's it been like? Well, I, it being in Japan here, I don't have the opportunity to, oh, oh, our time is up for that. Oh, oh. okay. Okay. Man, that <laughs> yeah, was right to the tip, tip of the going. iceberg. That's, okay. All right. That's how we're going to well, roll least, with this. It, at least people out there heard the question and they can think it over and then someone can bug you in the comments <laughs> something later. Yeah. yeah, I'll just say that I don't have an electric with me. I only have acoustic, but okay. I like playing alone with the acoustic. To me, uh, the electric is more of a group instrument mm -hmm. to me, so I, yeah. I don't okay. write on, a, on the electric guitar. Yeah. Um, so let's go, to, uh, let's go to your book. Okay. I'm just... And I want you to select randomly a select a page. Yes, yes, snuggle puppy. And then uh, read. They're probably oh. only one sentence per page there anyway, so go ahead. Well, you're going to love this. This is, this is not bullshit. I didn't like, I didn't rig it, okay? It says, the way I feel about you is a kind of a song. I think that's Whoa. perfect. You know what I'm it saying? Is, is the, really way, the way I feel about you is a kind of a song. So I think we can riff on that for sure. Yeah. So although the so, where I'd like to take it is uh, <laughs> is um, I've written a couple songs recently with even the blackouts that refer to my family. Actually, oh. me and Gub decided one one of our records was going to be about that was one of the themes of the record. Mm -hmm. and it felt a little bit strange because unlike my theater company where I do talk about my family, I know mm -hmm. they're not going to go to that show, and if they do, I'll see them. Whereas, <laughs> like with a song yeah uh you know but and and i was there's one song where i was pretty critical of my uh of my brother oh i was thinking about that the other day because that song was chosen to be talked about for this uh philosophy podcast i did and oh okay it felt strange to be uh being critical of him where i yeah. didn't actually confront him myself with it so it seems kind of uh oh. lame and not very honest well, I don't know, man. I, to give yourself some credit, because I think expressing yourself through song can also be a great show of respect to the other person. You know what I'm saying? It's like you're commemorating a significant aspect of your relationship with them, you know, because it's stuck in your head or in your feelings or something, you know? And it's, I don't know, I, I would <laughs> interpret it that way. If, if someone was pissed at me and wrote a song about it, I think I'd be pretty honored. I'd be like, well, fuck, you wrote a song about it. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think I should probably someday talk to him about it because I don't think he's ever heard it. But it, all it, right. did, it did, by the end of writing it, it was something, he, he, he's a born again and he said oh, something okay. critical to my mom, something very uh -huh. critical to my mom and like we were going to hell and he was going to be in heaven and yeah. my mom is like that's, a that's saint. The real, that's, my mom is the, that, I'm sorry, that's just like such like the opposite of the spirit of Christianity is to be like, I'm going there. You're going there. Fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why not exactly. try to bring? That's... You know, why not try to bring me up somehow? Like, encourage me and and you know, like, dude, yeah. if you tell me I'm already fucked, like, what what motivation do I have <laughs> to like be on your level? It's like, okay, well, I guess I'm fucked. You know? Yeah. So I, I wrote about that, and it actually I don't really believe in music as catharsis, and that might be a, a weird statement to say. I don't really feel mm -hmm. that, or I don't think you should go into writing music thinking I'm going to get all of this out of my system. Oh, I think it's yeah, yeah. Nah. I think it's, for me, it's more about I want to know what I'm thinking, and is when it's on paper in a song, I could then go back and review it Oh yeah. and see what I was going through. So it's, so it's not really catharsis getting it out. It's more about it becomes a, a, a solid object instead of an abstract thing to look at what yeah. you're thinking about. Yeah, so and it actually cool... did really help me. Yeah, and it helped me sort of get over him, and I started seeing the good things he was doing with his his born againness. Uh huh. Because you know, uh -huh. everything comes with good and bad sides, and he, you know, he sure. dedicates a lot of time to uh, orphans and helping out in uh, oh. in Israel, and so he. Wow! Does a lot of oh good wow! Work. Wow! That, yeah, I mean, I think anyone could easily admire that. You know, whatever their beliefs are, like that commitment to just. Mm -hmm being a good person and helping, helping people like that's yeah. awesome. And tra traveling to places that, you know, could, could be putting himself at risk, you know, to, to do, to make a difference. Yeah. I think that's great. Yeah. Well, that's... He, he, 
he told me a story uh, that, and he was saying it's sort of nonchalant, like lack, not last, lack of days ago, but nonchalant sort of. Yeah. He was, yeah. Um, he was in, I forgot where he was, but basically it was a orphanage that often gets attacked by oh. this mafia looking, looking for kids to sell, to sell. Oh my and God! That's actually, not... They showed up one day, and he had a and he had a bat, and he actually oh my... f- fought them off with a, a bat. Uh... Dude, that's that's <laughs> real right there, man. Like, I live in I live in Silicon Valley in California. You know what I mean? Like, I live in a, a suburban, nice, yeah. safe residential place because I live with my wife's family, basically. You know, so I'm kind of like leeching off. You know. Anyway, to think about realities like what you just described. It's. I feel very weak when I consider how real that is and how, like, my, my life is just, I mean, I think my life's hard, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I have this awesome place that I live. I have a son. I have a wife. I have a job. Like, these people who are, like, just trying to survive by doing these gnarly things, like, mm-hmm. exploiting people or using violence or uh, trying to take advantage of others just to survive, that's crazy, you know? I think I have... A lot to be thankful for <laughs> and and that makes <laughs> his that makes his contributions like all the more worthy too because it's like he's battling something that could be considered true evil in the world just this desperateness of our human nature that where we resort to doing things or we selfishly do things and yeah yeah it's, it's heavy i think i think what he's sort of discovered and i discovered in him is that he basically needs to be doing that helping people to those extreme levels in order to fight his own demons Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool that you wrote a song about that, I think. Because for me, re- songs that have any kind of religious context to it are always intriguing, but I'm always also a little wary about, like, should I, you know? Because that's a deeply personal thing, too, like whatever your take is on religion. And uh, there's so many kind of bullshit atheist songs or songs about this or that or, like, promoting it or saying that it sucks. And it's hard to find an honest song about that you know and uh, the honesty of for me not really knowing but having a sense of like what it means to be a good person and and why i should be doing that and trying to keep in mind sort of the fact that we're on this planet that's orbiting around a fucking star and all these you know universal concepts that we never ever think about but it's true it's happening right now like i try to at least put a little perspective in my life. And so I, I relate more to people who are religious now, like my mother in laws born again too, pretty more or less born again. Mm-hmm. And uh, I struggled with that a lot too. But but it's it's like what you were saying, you start to see the good in them and what the good that they bring to, to the world. And then you're kind of like, eh, it's all good. You know, it helps a little bit. But I don't know. She's never told me that I was going to hell either. <laughs> maybe she maybe she <laughs> already maybe she already thinks that and just hasn't said it, but she never yeah. said that. That would probably bum me out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I didn't even set the second twenty minutes, so we can oh, see the last time there without. Oh, we cheated. That's, that's fine. Well, I'm just <laughs> learning this, so. Uh... This is a good yeah, format, got though. A little bit more time. Yeah. Oh, okay. do you know what? I'm sorry. You know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna stop recording and call you back and see if the this line could be better by me calling okay. you back. But it's sure. a good time to stop, so I'm yeah, going to press the pause. Hey. Hey. Is it better? Yeah, it's still a little bit off. I don't know why, but that's okay. I'll deal with it. When you hung up and, and we were in the transition between you calling me back, I was like faced with this survey from Skype. How would you rate your conversation? Was it clear and very excellent? Was it kind of medium and sucked a little bit? Was the reception so terrible that the call was impossible and made you infuriated? You know, and I'm just like, ugh, like ugh. Yeah. So mine, mine at least just, mine just sang like, to me. It went do 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 Awesome. So All right. So gonna, uh, I'm gonna start this 20 minutes since we already uh, have started talking. Mm. Resume. Yes. Um, Resume. So, oh, we riffed off pretty good on that. Uh, what do you do? You want to respond to the, to, to the, having read that, or do you want to move on to some questions? It's up. To, I'll leave that one up to you. Yeah, good point. Because we didn't we didn't even talk about the the lyric, right, or the or the book thing. Oh no, I did. That's what I went. I oh, went right well, that was your, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, let's just. Uh, and I was listening. I, I, I just. <laughs> okay. I wasn't tuning you out, but um, now I understand. Um, 
let's just do a, a question that you have. How about okay. that? Okay, cool, cool. Uh, let's see here. Um, does it help you to analyze what you see? Is the thing the same amount of? Oh no, that's kind of similar to what we talked about before. Do you think? Oh yeah, yeah. It accomplishes the creative outlet. Seeing about the other, back in the middle, a scene on the extremes. Punk, punk. How do you figure out how to write short? Oh, this is a good question. Now, okay. How did you figure out how to write like short for songs? Uh, oh were yeah. You, were you a poet at all, or did you go straight into writing? songs what's your little bit of your history with oh writing? man this is the, the the best kind of question i'm really stoked and <laughs> and the fact that jughead is asking it to me <laughs> makes all the difference so okay i started writing, writing songs late uh i was like 26 or 27 when i started writing songs hmm. before that i hadn't really played guitar i was always obsessed with music and loved music and had already listened to punk rock for many many years but uh just didn't i was i was a skateboarder so skateboarding was the only thing I really cared about. And I love music, but skateboarding was like the thing that I was trying to get good at, the thing that I wanted to be known for and recognized for. And and it was a major part of my life. I mean, like as, as much as songwriting and music is now, that that was what skateboarding was for me before. And uh, and I really went for it too. You know, I wanted to get good, but it's, it's like many things in life. You can be good at a certain level, but you won't get to the level that, that like would be ideal, you know, because you just... In my case, I wasn't quite talented enough, and I was sort of adverse to taking risks a little more than I, I should have been. Like skateboarders have to just kind of go for it, you know, and, and they'll really get hurt. And it's like, whoa, dude, you're really rolling the dice. But most really good skateboarders have that natural risk taking, like like they're just focused enough or, or just balls to the wall enough where they just go for it and do it. And I never really had that. And I love skating, and I still love skating. But then I also fucked my ankles up really bad, and I have to wear like an ankle brace even when I walk now, and it, it's really a bummer. And I can still do it, but just now that I have a, a son, I haven't really skated properly in like two years. And then you just that type of skill for some reason, skateboarding, you can't really just jump back on and, and be good again. It's not like riding a bike; you just have to start almost from scratch, and it's really a bummer. And I'm like fearing that because I know eventually I'm going to want to maybe try skating with Logan, my son. But it's just going to be like, oh, it's like you used to be really good at something and uh, now you just suck. And nobody would look at you and be like, oh, I wonder if he was good. It's just like, oh, that dude sucks, you know, yeah. and they don't realize. Like I used to be sponsored by um, Jason Rothmeyer was this pro skateboarder and he was the team manager at Airwalk. I remember Airwalk Shoes mm -hmm. and he used to send me free shoes. And I was like, holy shit, you know, and he was a, he was a pretty famous pro skater. And so I was like, oh, he's sending me Airwalks. So that's fucking awesome. And then, you know, like I was at that level where. You know, I was at least a kid where you'd be like, oh, yeah, he's good. You know, mm -hmm. not great, but good. And so back to songwriting, like because I fucked my ankles up and because I couldn't skate and I was really depressed over it. I was like, well, I've always loved music. I might as well try to do something with that. And um, I'd been in a couple little bands in, in college and, uh, and stuff, but it was always stuff that other people were writing the songs. And I was just like, all right, I'll try, you know, being in the band. Um, but then when it was like I, I, I always was a really um i guess you could say artistic kind of kid because i drew i was i was known at my schools for like being a, a good artist like i would draw cartoons and i would draw you know in this certain style and people would always be like oh yeah that's one of dustin's drawings like everyone you know could could recognize it but then i, I lost interest in that but i always in my life wanted to have some sort of creative thing to be known for and then it eventually it just got to the point where i was like you know what I, i'll just get a guitar and learn how to play it and i just moved to california I'm from the East Coast. I'm from Virginia. I grew up there in this like little redneck town, which didn't support skating, didn't support punk, didn't support anything I was into. And now I'm in California, so it's awesome. But uh, when I first got out here, I didn't know anybody. It was just me and my uh, my wife now, but at the time it was just my girlfriend. And like she's Chinese, and and like I was just moving here to be with her. And like her parents were not down with me at first. They're like, "Who the fuck is this guy? This towny white guy from Bumpa?" <laughs> He's going to come here to California to be with my daughter, who's like a lawyer. Like, no way. Fuck you. You know, so that was like, I was like, oh, here I am. And then <laughs> I didn't have much going for me. So I picked up a guitar. I started writing songs. And, that, and then, then I just got hooked. And then it was like, I want to get better at this and better and better and better. And I became more obsessed with like the creative aspect of songwriting and honing the skills as a songwriter. Because the thing that's cool about pop punk is it at least gives you some sort of pretty clear uh 
goal of like, I want your song, my song to be super catchy, energetic, and with like some lyrics that make you either laugh or think. Like that's what good pop punk is. And those goal, goals were clear enough to me, and I knew that like, I, I became aware that like it was a style that was known for its simplicity. And once I could kind of figure out what was going on, I just took it from there. And uh, the, the process of writing the pop punk song for me has evolved a lot over the years, but I have always, always preferred uh, short, concise songs. And Screeching Weasel was one of the first bands where I was like, that song is rad. And then I looked and I was like, wait the fuck, it's only a minute and 30 seconds? I couldn't believe that. I was like, how can you get away with writing a song that's that short? But it, it works. And, and, and I was just baffled by that. And then I realized that there's a lot of short songs that, that don't really work and it's just kind of like a waste. <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck, what was that? But like a good short song that has a, a verse and a melody and a, a chorus or something that, and a lyric that sticks in your head, damn, then you know, you've know you got something there. And uh, I just want to write songs like that all the time. I mean, the longest song I've ever written was only like, I don't know, three minutes or something you know, for Grim Dees. I, I do a lot of stuff where I like collaborate with another person and say, hey, let me use your song. You know, I've done that plenty of times, but mm. as far as my songwriting goes, it would be very rare for me to do a punk song that would be over the two or three minute mark. I mean, usually I like to stay within, uh, there's this, this little sweet spot. It's like one minute and 20 seconds to one minute and 50 seconds. That's the fucking money shot of, of a short song right there. And it's just for some reason, it allows you to introduce with the, uh, maybe a little short chord change riff in the beginning, hit, to, go to your verse, make it nice and catchy, strong, have a cool little pre-chorus, chorus, and then you could either just do it again, second time, like the Lillingtons, you know, back channel broadcast. They did that almost the whole record. It was just like, here's a verse. Now I'm going to do it again. That's it. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. And But Cody and, and those dudes, and I know that Zach Rawhauser wrote a lot of that album. Those guys just had, between the two of them, such talent for writing good, good catchy songs like that. And so that inspired me. And then eventually it kind of got to the point where I was like, I don't really need to copy the Lillingtons or the Screeching Weasel. And I don't need to copy, copy, copy the way they write the songs, because writing a song is more than just making it sound like a certain style. It's, it's about expressing a melody and a, and a lyric and a, a message. And so once I kind of got hip to that, I started playing acoustic guitar more. And I, before I wrote Grim Deed songs, I only played like power chords and shit and mostly played like bass in bands and stuff. So once I got an acoustic guitar and I learned chords by going to the public library and like getting a chord book and learning, like I, I transposed the pop, pop, pop punk power chord progressions into like open chord progressions and there's something about knowing the open chords that once you know the four like chords that you can sort of use in any key you know you've got your three majors and one minor once you know sort of where those boundary lines are i, I feel like you can write songs a lot more efficiently and, it, and the melodies sort of come to me faster even than before and i've always kind of had this reputation of writing songs quickly and putting out a lot of stuff at, at, at a time but once i once i kind of understood pop punk from an acoustic guitar perspective that's when I could just be like, boom, 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 song, 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 song. I mean, I could write songs so fast that I had to actually check myself and be like, well, wait a minute, was that really good <laughs> enough? Or was that, was that kind of half-assed? But, but it just seemed, there's something about writing songs on an acoustic guitar, I feel, that when you're using those open chords, I don't know what it is, if it's just some kind of weird physiological thing, like the way you move your hands rather than just like back and forth like a power chord. There's something about it that, that sparks... Um, melodies more and like structures and songs just kind of reveal themselves more when you play with an acoustic guitar and so and i think when you're alone you can you're also sort of you can hear the rhythm too because you can hear your oh. hands on the strings more so yeah. you're almost keeping your own time better oh yeah too. so you're hearing more than just like the electric i, I have a hard time writing with that because it's just, oh, yeah it's yeah you know how it's going to sound it's a distorted you know sound mm -hmm. the acoustic mm -hmm. is great i did have another uh addendum to that question too do you do you find that you write the lyrics and music simultaneously a lot more? Excellent question, man. Excellent question. And this is a very this is always one of those things that even beginning songwriters are very interested in, like what's the first step? What's the first step? What's the first step? And um, I found that so I've written a lot of different kind of styles of songs, like mostly punk rock, but I, I write heavy metal songs too. I have like a whole project that's like strictly real heavy metal, like yeah. maybe a little bit of a punk influence, but it's like true heavy metal. You know what I'm saying? Like the only people who buy the albums are like people who live in Greece and, you know, like in Europe and stuff like no one in the United States gives a shit, but it's like this international phenomenon. It's really, it's interesting. That could be a whole other conversation if you want, but yeah, well, Kevin Abrams uh, is doing that too. You know, Kevin oh, has spent totally 20 something years and I, I talked to him about, it. he spent like 20 years in oh. punk and then he starts a heavy metal band as sort of a yeah. kind of a joke, even though he loves heavy metal. 
Yeah. And they're like, yeah. shoot, they're, they're doing they're, really they're, well now. They they open like so any big thrash band that plays over there, yeah. like they 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 open like they're they're playing big stages, you know they're they're having a good time I'm sure like they're really doing it like we just, I just write songs at my house and like email them to my friend in Sweden and we like make it a band but like he's really doing it yeah. and that's cool he well, seems I like think, an interesting I think too. what's interesting about him too is that he's basically it was a great frontman in punk and yeah. I think and I hear this from actual metal fans and him and Kevin himself is that. They don't know what to do with him. They're kind of like they don't know what this stringy, <laughs> weird guy jumping around to this metal music is doing. So they're enthralled. Uh, they just like uh, watch him. I think that's yeah. fascinating. So that was yeah. a sidetrack. So we're, let's go back to. Uh, that's uh, cool. Well, just the song, <laughs> the songwriting, right? Okay, so yeah. well, and he's, well, the reason he's, I ask is because uh, people often ask what comes first, and I, I, I do both. You know, sometimes the music will come first, and then I'll just come up with some words, and then then I'll I'll just take writing I have and try mm -hmm. to, and they, they come out very differently. Like the ones, if I start with music first, it's more about the melodic and the, the words are never as deep. But if I start mm -hmm. with the words first, then the music becomes less melodic and more uh, interesting to me. But uh, you but ever you, start, but it sounded like you were doing more like to, it sounded like as you were talking that you really into it, them coming one thing while you're, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Songs. Yeah. Oh so yeah. Go, for so sure. go more on that. So uh, you were okay. just talking about that. Well, the reason I bring up the heavy metal thing is because when I write a, a metal song, it's a very different process. Yeah. And I don't, I won't even talk about it, but I just say it's a very different process than doing the grim deeds. So the grim deeds in the beginning, I think it was just like trying to sort of spontaneously create something catchy and maybe put some cool lyrics behind it. Like that was the original idea. But then as it's gone on, you know, for a few years, it's, it's, developed into this outlet where if I have an extreme thought or an extreme emotion or a title or something that's that resonates emotionally and I can think of a clever way to express it either in a melody or in a in like a, a song title like a good example would be dead inside that's like a song that I, I put out recently and I think it's one of my better songs I was just gonna say that's actually a what I noted that as one of my favorite songs of yours too oh sweet man yeah, yeah. well I mean I, I wrote that song because I was I was experiencing depression but uh I thought it was funny to sort of have this song where, you know, in ordinary life, you just walk around and people are like, how are you? How are you? How are you? And you're like, oh, you're supposed to say good, good, good. And nobody says like, oh, well, last night I had a really bad fight with my wife and I, you know, I yeah. feel like shit and my life is really stressful and I don't really want to be here, you know, because then you sound like a neg negative asshole. But really, everybody is just kind of going around, going through the motions and suffering alone or suffering with their family. And I've always found that very sad. So the way I describe my depression is being like going to a party or something and just telling everybody about it. Like, Oh yeah, like I'm, I'm severely depressed. I don't care about anything anymore. My life sucks, but how are you? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and so that, that was the concept behind that song. And then it just came out funny, but, but funny. And it's true, you know, like yeah. something like that. That, that remind. let's go. This is a sidetrack, but I want to, this is what this is about conversation. There's, mm -hmm. I think a lot of the things my life or my life as a artist is mm -hmm. understanding some of the things I wrote when I was young, like in high school, and I, even younger. I wrote this statement one day. I wrote, wrote it down on a notebook, and it was, stand as you will, I will sit when I want. And that sort of relates that to me. It's like everyone's expecting you to stand up, you know, like, you know, be mm -hmm. be happy. Oh, and, sure. And, and, and sort of what I noticed was that, well, I'll sit, you know, I'll not be happy if, I, if I'm not happy. Right, and it really it was something that it's weird. These little weird statements I have become a part of me in my hmm. like. I want to be honest with myself and honest with other people, so I feel like yeah. you do have to admit you're not happy, and and it's okay to be depressed. You need to work through those things, and denying it yeah. just makes it worse. So that kind of oh, was, sure. a, was a statement that I and that I think that reminded me. Your song reminded me of that that yeah. breakthrough I had when I was younger about that. Wow. That's pretty cool. I, I wonder about that with you and your life and, uh, you know, people who know you and are fans, I think, know that you, you travel around a lot and you do these different projects and you're working. You, the Japan um, experience has been like an ongoing, you know, era of your life, which I yeah. think is pretty cool because I, I, I love Japan personally. I've, I've visited there and I loved it and like all the people there. I have people there who I've only met a few times that I still feel are like close friends, you know, and it's just like a, such a amazing place. Anyway, what, what I was saying is uh, something else. Um, I was talking about uh, your life, right? And like how you 
kind of deal with with having what I would consider to be like sort of an alternative lifestyle. You know what I mean? Like I live with my wife's family and I'm a teacher, you know, and I have a kid. Like that's my lifestyle. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not like I'm I'm able to sort of embark on the sort of adventures and stuff that you do. But I know that probably you also have some like feelings of like, hmm, like I wish maybe there could be these other things going on in my life or you know what I'm saying? Like it's hard to keep pace with what you're expected to do in society if you're a kind of person like you who sort of chooses your own path. So I just wanted to uh, tell you about that. I'm often weighed down with the idea of, of structure and like and what and commitment to things mm-hmm. and what it means. Uh, I mean, it, me and my uh, nine year girlfriend now, Paige, are, are often or more recently been talking about like marriage and babies, and and I never thought that was a part of my life. Uh, but it was mm-hmm. more like my obsessive commitment to art just didn't allow for those things. Even though I really like kids, it just yeah. I, I made a de- I made a decision that it was just. It was not for me for this freedom that I wanted in in not pinning myself down to any art movement, any kind of format or any genre. I mm-hmm. had to give up a lot of that sort of stuff that was appeal appealing to me, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and now and now I'm older. And luckily, I have a girlfriend that's younger, like, you know, so mm-hmm. I'm able to you know, as a guy, you know, we can have kids until we're like 80. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. <laughs> So, well, hey. uh, but but I but I and Duchamp uh, Marcel Duchamp is one of my favorite artists, and he he didn't get married until he was in his sixties, and I think he sort of experienced the same thing where you he never knew maybe it might not happen at all. So I, I guess I'm, I'm that's in my brain now. So but but I, yeah, I purposely have not chosen a lot of structures that most people do because I didn't think I'd, I allowed myself that because of the artistic choice I had to make. But yeah. now that I'm older, I feel like I can try to go back to some of that and decide what parts of those I want. Yeah, that's and then cool. Then I got to financially figure it out too. So that's yeah, cool. geez, isn't that something? Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> I, you know, I really often wonder how people get by because I'm a college educated person and I have a career that's like a legitimate career. But where I live, I couldn't have even afford like my own apartment. I think if, even if I wasn't married. And definitely if I, if I didn't have a, my own child, but like if it was just me living as a teacher, like I definitely couldn't afford San Francisco and I live in a place, um, the suburbs south of the SFO airport, which are pretty nice. It's the area known as the peninsula and dude, homes around here, apartments are, it's just insane. Mm-hmm. And even where I work as a teacher, there's students who are, who are moving. Like I've lost like four kids in four months just because their families can't afford to live here. And, uh, it's a scary time to be an adult. And like, I always thought as a kid, like, if you did what you were supposed to do, it would be no problem to own a house. It would be no. It would just be like what everybody had, yeah. and it's not like that anymore, man. And uh, it stresses me out a lot. Yeah, most people. I am actually the only person I know that. Well, I will actually own my house in January. This January. Oh, cool. Yeah. Wow. Like, Congratulations. With mortgage. Yeah, and I don't think I know anybody else. And that's just because my high school friend, who I've been living with since high school, said mm-hmm. we're getting a house. We're not paying rent anymore. Um, nice. So I wouldn't have made that choice. I mean, I I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> How old were you? When we started buying it, well, we lived together yeah. since out of high school, but we started uh-huh. twenty years. It is a twenty year loan now, so it's but twenty okay. years ago we yeah. yeah paying for it. Yeah. You must have had your shit together a little bit more than I would have, <laughs> even now. <laughs> like, I'm like, my wife's always looking at mortgages and and home websites and stuff, and I'm just like, uh, you know, <laughs> like. Yeah. I don't know. I just I feel like I have no nothing about about that whole, you know, there's so much detail that goes into buying a house, selling a house, uh, maintaining a house, uh, having investments in property, you know, all taxes and all this stuff. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, so my friend knows a lot more about it than me. I just was one of the men, money men with him. And I just oh, that's sort of, cool. Oh, look at that. Oh, time uh, 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 we kind of wrapped up that section of it anyway. So Yeah, I so agree. Now, now it's time for me with my Oh, good, good. Life. Keep, and then you'll, good. you'll start off the, the answer with whatever this sparks in you. So okay. let's see what okay. I'm going to – this is the page here. So there's a lot of stuff to choose from. Wow. Uh, so I'm just going to go right <laughs> here in the middle which says uh, Watashi no shigo- – oh, I actually know these words. Watashi no <laughs> shigoto yotai. Uh, yori 
Oh, this word I don't know. Subo Sunday. Ah, so Sunday. Akurete. Akurete. Akurete duno. So what does this mean? My work is ahead of schedule and behind schedule. <laughs> okay, okay. So that is our topic is uh, being ahead or behind schedule. All right. Well, the thing I'll throw out there is this. Okay. As me as a musician, Things have really changed. I mean, really, no one buys CDs anymore. When I, I make CDs for some reason, you know, and like, yeah, Sorry, maybe five. I got to start this up again. I didn't do it again. It's because uh, it's, it's a new format. That's so, right. That's uh, right. Well, okay. you're doing a great job. Yeah, continue. We got 20 more minutes. All right. So I'm just saying that people don't spend money on music really like they used to, and uh, I don't. I honestly don't know how bands really can make it just touring a lot without having like a pretty secure job with mm. benefits or insurance or something at home that, that allows you to tour all the time. And I know people, you know, like who've had struggles with that. Like they're like, well, my job like won't give me an insurance anymore because I've been on tour for the last like 14 months, you know, stuff like that. And, and, and plus I can't help sometimes but think that, uh, punk rock, you know, it's still very, very much resonates with people like, your age, my age, and, and people younger too, but I, I worry that it's kind of a waning uh, culture that may be surpassed by another generation because the kids that I teach, a lot of them don't don't have any love for rock and roll. You know what I mean? Like they don't even give a shit about it. It's like their idea of what music is is a totally different thing and how they consume it and how they respond to it. it, it to me, maybe I'm just too old now to really get it or understand like how it moves them, but... Uh, I don't know. I what I always felt that like one cool thing about pop punk is it, it's sort of this universal, timeless genre. Even though it's you know it's electric guitars and it's it is what it is, but uh, good pop punk songs could just be acoustic guitar songs, and there's a timelessness to like good rock songwriting. Yeah. But those those little nuances and stuff, I feel like, man, are, is that something that kids twenty years from now will even really appreciate the same way? Uh, maybe that's a very cynical view, but it's it occurs to me, you know, because of my job, I, I teach. 11 year olds and like what they're into kind of is like a, a very extreme maybe misunderstood version of what like high school kids are into mm -hmm. you know well, I, I once again it could like music could just change drastically but I always feel like there's a always been a battle between the uh, of I don't know overly complicated music and that battle against it and that's I think in mm -hmm. any sort of art there's that sort of movement of getting so complicated with something and the, the rebellion is to, no, we just got to feel it and just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I think that always exists in music and I'm hoping it still continues. It may look like sure. something else. You might not recognize it as pop right. punk. And I, I honestly, yeah. I think a lot of pop punk has veered away from that. And mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. It becomes really sugary and just like what happened in the seventies with the one hit wonders. It was the same thing. Sixties uh -huh. and seventies is, you know, Beatles and these bands like Kinks came up with these sort of grungy feel, and then they turn them into these poppy stuff, which I like a lot of it. But mm -hmm. it sort of diminishes the movement over time. Oh yeah, if it doesn't oh, have yeah. that heart and the you know the deepness. Oh, it. trust me, I know what you're saying. And uh, well, for me, I don't mean to interject, but lyrics, I've always valued lyrics that are straightforward enough where like you could read them and know what the song's about. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like. I, I appreciate that people need sometimes to write lyrics that are more abstract and you read it and you just sort of wonder a little bit like what it's about and like what it meant to the person and whatever you know sort of informs how you feel about that song. I've always, for as far as pop punk goes, I've always liked it when it was a little more just simplified, not, not dumbed down, but just like straight and to the point. Like, here's a song about me jerking off, you know, or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. and I have a song, I have a song about that. So, <laughs> you know, and like, I think that people aren't really, they don't get enough of that. And that, that might be why people respond to some of my song titles at least, or like lyrics that I do, because it's more like, uh, what? He, he's really, he's doing that. Like, yeah. it's kind of like telling a stupid joke, but being, having the balls to, to go through with it, <laughs> even knowing that people are probably going to cringe and maybe one person in the room will actually find it funny. You still just got to go for it. You know? I, 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 yeah, I think in art in general, you got to just, go for them you're it's always taking chances you're always on that precipice <laughs> falling even fall um uh, the thing i wanted to respond to the schedule that you brought up is um mm -hmm. i 
for years and years, people would ask me that question. What do you like more, theater or music? And I, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I actually don't like the question because I it's it, 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 it it's a complicated answer. And every time I try to tell someone, they get like the interviewer gets bored. I, I think they expect <laughs> me to say, fuck music. Yeah, it's all about music. You know? But I'm like, well, there's this thing, uh, <laughs> you know, there's this element. <laughs> the the basic simple thing is, is that theater is more intellectually stimulating for me. Uh, oh, yeah. in the, in the moments like performing mm -hmm. as an actor it's more intellectually stimulating and more difficult um, i bet music is all of that comes beforehand and performing live is freedom so yeah. to me at the end of the day i would have to say if i'm talking about being full of joy it would be music yeah and as yeah. to what you were saying i'm mm -hmm. finding myself harder to be able to do that i can't mm -hmm. I can't make a living. I can't even really get oh, yeah. a band together who can go somewhere and play right. live. So it's really kind of frustrating because I do feel uh, that's maybe what I'm best at. Yeah, well, maybe. it's certainly what people would want to see you continue doing. I mean, you're a big inspiration to everybody because, I mean, you and Joe and like, how I even been and like dudes that have been going on and just keep continuing to put out creative material and even when it's not like, you know, I'm sure you're not any, I don't think anybody's making money on albums anymore, really. So it's like, yeah. you're doing it for the love and you're doing it because it's important to you. And, and the fact that you remain, you know, active in music and, and creating music and stuff and not just like, oh, here I am again, I'll play a few Screeching Weasel songs. Like you're doing your own thing. Like you just did the Even in Blackouts album and, and like you contribute in significant ways. And that's awesome because it keeps the scene moving forward and, it ha and you're like, you know, you're still, you know, you've been through your wars and you've been through... <laughs> a lot of shit but you're still there marching with the crew you know and like that's awesome man because it, it because it's also it brings people like you and i together like i was a fan and i got in touch with you because i i love screeching weasel and stuff and so now we're doing something like this because of that i felt I, there was an accessibility there through you by the way not not necessarily anyone else in in the band but through you i was like you know what let's all you know let's reach out and and that's what's cool about our punk community i feel like people are really into helping and supporting each other and being in contact and offering encouragement at least the people that i know that you and i are share a lot of contacts in the pop punk world and i'm i'm stoked on like, all these people that are you know still doing it and, and i think a lot of great stuff is still coming out so yeah, i think i wrote about that uh, one of the i think the saviors of the pop punk is that it got out of the mainstream and oh yeah and and now everyone knows each other like Mm -hmm. The fact that I know Gabriel from South America or, you know, the Mangies in Italy or, mm -hmm. you know, you in California, it's just, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everyone knows each other, like not yeah. just musically, but knows each yeah. other and considers them friends. I think that's amazing. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. It's fine. Oh, yeah. It doesn't do anything for you financially <laughs> right, as right. much. But to me, at the end of the day, that can't be the, be the thing that matters, you know? No, no. Well, why do you think your house show is like the most coveted ticket of the year, man? Like when you do those <laughs> uh, Jughead's Basement shows, like yeah. that's that's the dream pop punk show to go to. And I've never been to one, which sucks because yeah, I invited you to play, but you could you, know, you were having it, your, you were having your child, so baby time. It was like <laughs> it was like uh, you know that song by the Doors, "This Is the End." <laughs> My only friend. It's like that's it, bro. See you in ten years, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So where where are we at? Are we at you asking me or uh, I, think, I think I think that's where we left it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So me asking you. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to yeah try to dig in a little more because we don't have a okay, lot. Yeah, dig in a little more. All right. So I'm just gonna go for this. Okay. So I want to I'm gonna phrase it as a question eventually, but it requires me to set it up. Okay. Uh. So people who love Screeching Weasel, I mean, one of the things that everybody loves is Ben's songs. You know, and like the songs he wrote have a lot of meaning and uh, he's a good songwriter and he, I think he's gotten better over time too and he's really refined his, his craft. Uh, Vapid too, I would say. But, uh, you know, those elements really are particularly inspiring to someone like me because my chief concern is songwriting. And so I've had a very complicated sort of uh, way of dealing with, with the Ben Weasel phenomenon and person, you know, because there have been a lot of, I think, songwriters who admire other songwriters always want to sort of aspire to seek their approval or like ha be, ha be acknowledged by them or something. And I, I really wanted that, you know, like I wanted, I wanted a goal of mine was to have like someone who I really admired 
say like, oh, that was a good song. You know what I mean? And so I wanted that from him for like a long time. And like he's someone I've thought about a lot, even though I've never met him. And I know about him through people, you know, not just like what you would read on message boards and shit, but like through people who know him, you know, and like I've heard different stories and stuff. So I've remained interested in him, but it has complicated my relationship with, with the band and like how I feel about the band. But you are always the, kind of the saving grace of, of like, if there was ever a doubt, I mean, Ben's songs will always be rad, but if I ever had mixed feelings about Screeching Weasel, like all I need to do is flip it over and see you playing guitar and know like that Screeching Weasel isn't just Ben. It's just, it's a whole thing. It's like this whole, um, you know, it's this whole experience of the, of the whole band and, and the people involved and the, and the activities that you all did together and what you built together. And, and that's a very uh, heavy thing to consider. So I guess what I'm saying is, how do you feel about being in contact with fans, knowing that we all have probably something to say about Ben and like knowing that when we're around you, part of us is always kind of wondering, you know, like how you're feeling. And when you post stuff about Weasel, like does it bum you out at all? Or is it, is it something that you still can look back and be like, you know, this, these were some very awesome experiences and, and I feel proud of what we accomplished and stuff. Or is it, it you know, I'm just wondering because it's, Everybody who knows the band knows that there's been a lot of turmoil, you know, throughout the history of the band. And that uh, even now, like, communication is probably strained at best among people. And, like, that, that's that got to hurt still, you know, to this day. But it's still, it's like, it's such an important part of so many people's lives that uh, I think everybody sort of remains involved with it somehow, even if it's not, you know, like, yeah. like with you, you have your own things going on, you know. But, like, you do revisit Screeching Weasel and the memories and like share like rare performances and stuff that have been awesome by the way, like better, you know, and I've, I've scanned YouTube for years and years for like, Oh, I want to see, you know, trying to find cool shit, but you always post the best stuff. So like, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know, like every Screeching Weasel fan has, has something to say and maybe a feeling about, about Ben negative or positive. And, uh, what's your take on, on, on this whole sort of thing? You know, like people like me, wondering about how it is to be Jughead and, and yeah. where you see it all from your perspective. Well, that's, that's really, 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 really complicated. And I, I almost, <laughs> maybe if I could figure it out, I might have another book in it. But Weasels in a Box was sort of trying to figure out me and Ben's relationship as it was decaying. So that was mm -hmm. then. And now, to me, there's still one going on this, whatever, 15 years afterwards. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's very complicated. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't listen to Weasel for about a year or two years after mm -hmm. me and Ben finally like had a final argument. Mm -hmm. um, but I came back around because it's and, – and one of the big arguments with me and Ben was he wanted me to sign over all the rights and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I had said, I go, Ben, it's all right if you just want to take over the business aspect of it. Because we weren't a band at the time. It was just the company we were talking about. Mm -hmm. and I said, I can't, I can't sign away these rights, not because of the money. It's more about I feel like I'm signing away my history, like yeah. Oh, yeah. who I am or who I, what I've done. And for a year, he allowed that happen. And then it, he forced me into a corner and I had to sign these papers or else we would have been in court for our whole lives, you know. Oh yeah, which is yeah. what he said to me. Well, I'll keep you in court for for both our uh, whole lives, you know. Yeah, and it yeah. wasn't worth it. I had the new band going on. I had other stuff I wanted to do. So it got. I couldn't listen to the band for a while there. Mm -hmm. But then, but then it, the reason I held out for that year is what brought me back to it. Is like it's me. It's my history, and mm -hmm. no one can take that away from me. I still love Ben, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because we're not friends now doesn't mean we weren't friends for 20 years and that was meaningful yeah oh yeah and, we, Jeez. and there's like how would you separate who i am now from what him and i did and how could mm -hmm. he do it there's no way that yeah. him and i can separate out yeah uh, each other from our, our lives you know all oh, right right um so i still feel like it's it's my job to still promote the band even though it's not me in it anymore like and and yeah. i do it i do it I do it mostly by not being critical. I don't like yeah. go out and say, "Hey, buy this." It's just right. it's my job not to be critical. Um, of right. how I feel it's weird. It's weird to say that, but I 
I let everyone else do that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I feel like you're a kind of a curator or a sort of an archivist and you, you keep these, these very pleasant, very meaningful memories alive through, through the communication that you, you know, that you offer. And I think it's great. And it's, but I will say that, you know, I don't get too many notifications anymore because who knows what you're really seeing on Facebook and what you're not seeing, <laughs> you know, like yeah. someone posts something and you have like, I have like a thousand friends. So is, is it going to show up in my feed? Who knows? But Ben's stuff would show up, you know, screeching weasel Facebook page. I think he has some, it's pro, it seems like he has something to do with writing the posts. Maybe yeah. he gets someone else to do it, but, but you know, I read those too. And so I'll like see the, the video that Junk had posted and be like, Oh yeah, that's awesome. Like that show, like wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been awesome if I, you know, I was 30, 13 when that show was happening in Philadelphia. So there's no way I would have been able to go, but <laughs> it's just the thought that it was awesome. Like still gets me stoked. <clears throat> but then on the other hand, you got Ben promoting, uh, the, the re-release of Wiggle, which is happening. And, and it's like, you know, it's just like you would expect from any other band, like, pro, you know, this is the, you know, release date, check it out. And here's all this cool shit that we have that you can buy, you know, like mug or t-shirt or, you know, whatever. And, um, it's kind of weird for me because, you know, he keeps going and he has every right to, and I'll still be interested in whatever he puts out songwriting wise, especially if it's under the screeching weasel name, just cause it, you know, it is what it is to me. And, uh, I just wonder like, if it's weird for him to do it that way because he, he just kind of goes like, all right, business as usual, business as usual. Like we're going to continue to conquer the pop punk world world and like honor the people who've been into our band for a long time and, you know, reissue these cool, whatever. But in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking like, man, it's like, he, it can't, he, I don't know. I don't know him as a person, but it just seems like so much history with the band and so much has, has happened that, um, I couldn't imagine it's easy to continue you know, promoting it and everything. And especially now where I, I know he plays shows and, and they probably, uh, you know, he probably makes money, but it's still, uh, it, things aren't what they were, you know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's interesting on one hand to see your sort of reflective, you know, posts and then switch and be like, okay, here's the current screeching weasel. I could go and buy their new t-shirt and stuff. You know what I mean? It's like two different worlds, two different, it's almost like ones as if screeching weasel is, 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 almost like already a relic and then the other is like current we're still going you know we're still going for it so here's my thing with that i had <laughs> i had always wished that he because when we actually had our argument and split he wasn't doing there was no screeching weasel he was doing ben weasel and weasel and mm -hmm. i thought that was great i was like oh wonderful because and i was not like hey you can't do weasel songs with and i was like that'd be ridiculous you're ben yeah. weasel you wrote all these songs yeah, do yeah. With ben weasel do play all the songs play the songs i helped you write i don't care right um it was when he decided to call it screeching weasel again and i wasn't invited where it became mm -hmm. in my mind it's still a different band it's i mean yeah. i was still like once I said, again never really say anything bad about mm -hmm. that band but to me, it's not the same thing. So um, maybe that's well, kind of reflected in how we act because he's continuing this new, almost it's new, a different entity. Whereas yeah. I'm sort of the archiver of what it was, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and for what for what it's worth, if you took a hundred Screeching Weasel fans and gave them a survey and asked them to name like what's the true Screeching Weasel lineup, everyone would say the same thing. It would be Ben, Jughead, Vapid, and Panic. Like that's the lineup. That's Screeching Weasel, and in everybody's head, that I think, uh, may, not everybody, but in most people's heads who are longtime fans of the band, like that's the the image of the band that we keep in our head. And and when we say we're Screeching Weasel fans, I think we're saying we're fans of of that band, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to all the songs, in addition to everything else, but you know, it helps. Like the, the whole thing with rock and roll, a lot of its presentation and and how you connect with this group of individuals. And I connected with everybody in that lineup somehow, and especially you, you know. So that's something. Yeah, <laughs> something I, also, I mean, there's many reasons I still write about it too. One of them is purely because I know it's. I try to write about other stuff, and the audience <laughs> wants to hear <laughs> Weasel. But my thing is, I don't. I'm not like, oh my god, I need to write about it. I love it. I just can't <laughs> allow myself to only write about that because sure, it'll sure. put me into a corner. But mm -hmm. I'm a writer, so I'm going to write about what people want to hear, but I'm yeah. going to write about how I want to write about it. And mm -hmm. and to me, it still has to be pertinent to what's going on now. So whenever I write yeah. a post, it's usually something in my life is happening where 
reflecting on this incident mm-hmm. is, is still in the present. Mm-hmm. That comes across, by the way. A lot of your a lot of your posts have a tone of sort of wistfulness and and like you can almost feel like maybe what you're going through as you type it, which is good. I think it, you you communicate as a writer in in ways that are easy for me to identify with, at least. So. Cool. Cool. Have you ever read uh, Ben Weasel's novel? Oh, it's called. Uh, what, what the fuck is it called? I have it in the garage. You um, I put out uh, like like hell. You oh you put that out? I didn't yeah, even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What kind? What kind of fan am I? I don't know that. Shit. <laughs> no, I don't. You know, but. there's so many aspects to the band. I don't expect everyone to know. But my my weasels in a box is in response to the to like. Oh, cause, okay. Because he okay. kills me off. So yeah, my yeah. Whole, the weasels in a box is all revolves around me walking in front of a car and dying. Oh, oh, look at that! Uh, uh, <laughs> look what I did. We end up with me dying. <laughs> yeah, what a segue! What a segue! This is a good format, though. Yeah, this is a very good format because I could ramble on for for I a long me time too. So that's why. Well, so now we each have. Basically, each have two minutes to uh, wrap it up. Okay. And if it's all right with you, I'd like, I and that this goes anywhere, but I'd like to end it, end it. So I think yeah, you okay. Go first, so you have two minutes starting. You need a moment to think, or do you just wanna? I'm just I'm go good. With, okay, and go. All right. So yeah, I mean, this experience for me, it's very significant in many ways, and it's something that I think, when you put it out, it's probably gonna get people. It'll probably be cool for people to listen to you know people are like oh that's that's that seems like a cool match you know these two guys talking mm. and uh i appreciate that too because you know with with art and with music you hope that people care and anything you can do to sort of invite them to the conversation and invite them to like check out the music is like it's something worth pursuing and like doing this for me even if i didn't have never had a band would have been would have been like an honor to do it because i've been such a fan of, of you as a person and Screeching Weasel as a band and your guitar playing and the energy and the originality that you brought to like the pop punk phenomenon, you know, so that it's been awesome for that reason, but it's also, uh, makes me feel good because I've, you, you know, some of my songs and like you, you made me feel that you can relate to lyrics that I write and it, and it's a deeply personal project, you know, for sure. Like it's me, like Grim Deeds basically is, it's pop punk, but it's a, it's like me trying to communicate my personality and myself to everybody, anyone who will listen, you know. So, um, and I love interviews. So, <laughs> I'm the same way. I do too. Uh huh. Uh huh. So that's it. I think I don't know how much how much time do I have left. A couple well, seconds. Keeps on going, but you got, <laughs> you got thirty <laughs> seconds, but you can end right there oh, if you want. You, you have well, anything. all right. Well, you know, I'll tell you this. My life has <laughs> changed a lot since I had a kid, and it's been pretty hard for me. You know, yeah. pretty stressful. And everything, but to be honest, this, the the Grim Deeds project and and the communication that I maintain with like people like you and people who inspire me and people who are part of that scene who care about pop punk music, that's a really positive thing in my life. And the fact that the Grim Deeds thing has gained enough momentum so that I could like secure a Jughead's basement for <laughs> interview, like that makes me feel really good, even though when when life is hard. So thank you. <laughs> Perfect. You just that's that's the end of it then there. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, I gotta stop it. Okay. Oh, why is it not? Look, I could start a new one without that one stopping. <laughs> I feel like I'm in bed getting up from the alarm, like, oh shit, I gotta go to no, work, I'm just you know? I'm about this. Uh, <laughs> those were nice words, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Deeds. I expected Thanks. you to be a little bit more mean in general when I, when I first really? heard about you. Um, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you're not. No, I'll, I'll, I'll just say that, yeah, I, I, I'm. I'm as happy that you uh, jumped at the opportunity to do this um, because I think I've I've really liked becoming a journalist over the over the years and uh, mm-hmm. I'm always trying to find opportunities to to expand that and uh, and I love the yeah. idea of it being a conversation so um, yeah and when we met we were in um, I was in San Francisco and you yeah oh yeah and we con- you, you you took me to what what hill was that what mountain or what was that sp- place where we looked out all over uh... okay. so uh, it's a museum it's called the randall museum and then there's a trail that goes yeah. up above it and uh I, I forget what the trail is called it might be a different name but i'm pretty sure it's called the randall museum and it's just this beautiful lookout point where you can see almost a panoramic view of the entire yeah. you know city of san francisco and it was right there that i knew that i wanted to have a, a longer term friendship yeah. with you in discussion um, yeah because i was like yeah. oh this this guy has a lot to say he's smart <laughs> he writes music 
Um, so you were my first when I decided to 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 actually search out people to do this with. You were the first one that came to. Oh, that's mind. awesome, man! So, so wow, uh, thank you for good. doing this with me. And I don't, mm -hmm. yeah, I don't have much more to say. I think that's mm -hmm. it. We accomplished our goal. We did. And let's look at that. Let's see. Well, I also had like 24 seconds left, but I think I'll end it there. Okay. Hails. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to throw that in there somewhere. Yeah, I know. I know you had to. I don't have. I don't have a. I don't have a. What do you call? It? What do they call those things? A uh, catchphrase. Oh. Catchphrase, bro. You gotta have it. <laughs> it's all the rage. I've stuck with it. I, people have made fun of it too. Yeah. But uh, yeah. fuck it. I've named the album Hales. Yeah, I know. I know you have. So. Yeah. Gotta all go right. with it. So hails to you, uh, Mr. Deeds. Uh, Mr. All right. Grim Deeds, and uh, have a, it, for you. It's night, so you're probably winding yep. down, and I'm actually winding up. Uh, Ooh. Well, hey, man, if you if you have the occasion to say hi to any of the, the Japanese crew out there, like uh, Hisashi or Keita or uh, Shogo or any of those dudes, like tell them Grim Deed says what's up. Yeah, I spend a lot of time uh, with Shogo. Actually, I go to Fukui a lot. And, uh, he's oh, great. yeah. He's a, I really want to meet him. He, he yeah. sent me two of the nicest packages with uh, his music, and uh, his whole family inspires me, man, because yeah. they're all, you know, his daughter yeah. writes songs. And, yeah, and, like, yeah, actually, I, I've given given her a couple lessons. We actually hung out in her living room, and she's yeah. she's really good. She's got a great voice, yeah. and she's oh yeah, she's got the a sincere, so. very sincere, uh, heartfelt yeah. style yeah. singing and songwriting. So I, I'm into it. Yeah, yeah dude. All right. Well, All right, uh, take care, my friend. Right, you too. Don't be a stranger. Okay. I won't. We'll be in touch. I'll chat you soon. Okay. Bye All right. Bye. Later. Man.